So hi guys and uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of the show, Catching Up Podcast, and uh, we're doing a little trick now. Like I said earlier, Yagamod's gonna teach me a little trick in the Fire Palace, which is called the S Barrel Super Slide, and it's uh, in front of the Fire Palace. Yes, indeed. So, um, I suggest you go into the Fire Palace for now already and kill off the enemy so we have enough time to explain what is going to happen, etc. Hey, excellent. Uh, it's probably not, they are probably not killed uh, with the a weapon, right? You probably cast a spell or do something to go faster than just whip them for time. Um, originally we used to balloon them, but with this trick that we have now, it's just straight up not necessary anymore because we can essentially squeeze past them fast enough so they are not usually in the way, but they can be if you get really unlucky. So it's a possibility. Okay, all right. Let's do this now. Let's do this indeed. <laughs> Alrighty, so basic concept is it's called the Barrel Super Slide because the barrels are unstoppable. They're kind of a broken item in this game. And for anyone who does not necessarily know this game, this in front of Sand Knight here is a ramp. You can slide it down, but you cannot go up of it. So I suggest you switch over to the fist weapon for now. Alright, let's do this. So I can demonstrate the casual way of getting up that ramp. So. <laughs> You're not intended to go up there, exactly. Just uh, keep doing this. Just yeah, sure. keep punching, and with each punch, your character moves forward just far enough that the next the subsequent punch would actually lead you further up the ramp a bit further. You have a 50% chance of a punch, a 50% chance of a kick, so you always want the punches. Eventually, you will get up the ramp. <laughs> so this is kind of how casually you can get up this ramp or across similar portions without any trouble. However, in a speedrun that is kind of awkward. Yeah, so of we have a different method. Alrighty. Now I suggest you equip a barrel on the boy. Yep. Oh sorry. That's... Or on any other character, it really doesn't matter who gets the barrel. Just to control the character that gets the barrel. Alright. Alrighty. And now you also want to use a candy. It's worth noting that you cannot actually use an item with the character that is barreled. So you have to use the menu of a character that is currently not barreled. Yep. So that's kind of specific because the barrel character cannot use the item. They are just kind of locked in there. So you want to use the candy, which is a healing item, onto the barrel and then just hold up. Yep. Oh, that's All right. cool. Uh, I think it's important to know, though, uh, I seem to know where to stop and what to do because, and you may have seen I have a change of clothes, uh, we had a little hiccup, a little problem when we did the first recording of this part of the trick last week, uh, where Yagamot's sound uh, didn't record, and that was really sad because I wanted to do the trick as blind as I could, and since I've never heard about that trick specifically before, uh, that was perfect, but... Sadly, like I said, I did try it, I was successful, and when I rewatched the recording, uh, it didn't work, so we had to record it a second time. Thank you, Yagamot, by the way, to find some time for me again. It's really My appreciated. Pleasure. And so I, I... Okay, no, sorry, go, move on. Yeah, the basic concept is, I'm basically going to explain it right now, as I explained before, just kind of step by step, so you understand the concept as to what is going on in the first place. Yeah. All righty. The basic idea is that when you have the barrel and you get healed or damaged somehow, you will get locked into your direction that you're currently walking in for some weird reason. I don't really know why. That's just, you can just straight up walk up the ramp as long as you are under that weird barrel plus heal effect. Yeah. So the basic idea now is what you want to do, what you want to achieve is you want to barrel all three characters and heal all three of them and have them all walk up at the same time. However, you cannot easily control the AI. If your AI characters are close enough, they will not move at all. They will just stand in place and you will get locked because you cannot move out of their range of their camera range. You have to be within a certain range of your allies in this game. It's not all that great, but that's just how this game works. Exactly. So when I just punched my way up or when you showed me the trick with the barrel plus eel, I ended up at the top of the ramp. But the problem was... If I tried to go too far away, I couldn't reach the door because the other two characters were still stuck uh, at the bottom of the ramp, and so my character couldn't go to the door. It, it was cool, but it doesn't help. Yes, you need to get all three characters up exactly. the ramp. Um, real quick uh, 
for the one player controller category we need to do needed to do this little trick up the ramp in a really convoluted and difficult way that took to do about two or three minutes and it was really difficult to do like straight out the most difficult trick of the run that a one controller runner had to do okay. and it was pretty much required i can later go into detail as to what this even does for us because some of the people that may know even the game might be wondering hey that doesn't even save that much time why would you go and spend two or three minutes doing this i will explain later i guess okay all right so either way let's let's just go ahead how to do this i suggest you select the, select the lady at yeah. this point all right and you just position them about there. That's excellent. All right. Okay. What? So step by step before you do it, what you want to do is you want to position all of your characters kind of in the middle. So you wiggle up and down a little bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. this, this is fine. This works. All righty. Now, what you want to do is you want to barrel both the sprite and the boy at the same time. Yep. And then immediately walk up with the lady and open up the menu again. Sorry, they move that a little a bit. bit. Yeah, it was a bit slow for that matter. Yeah. Um, it okay. will find it will still work if you. It's just a bit of a tighter window to execute now. Sure. And there is also backups for this, so it's not a lost cause, so to speak. <laughs> All right. What you want to do now is, I suggest you go, align yourself with the left wall just here, just kind of as a backup strategy. Okay, you want me to quit the menu? Uh, quit the menu, yes, it's fine. All right. Uh, because the boy is too close already. Uh, align yourself, go all the way down with uh, with the character, with the lady. And then to the right, to the middle. Don't open the menu yet. Oh, okay. It's not necessary for now. Uh, all the way down to the bottom wall. The bottom wall, okay. And okay, then you position. There. Yes. The idea is that you're as far as close as possible to the entrance, so it gives you as much as leeway as possible. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. So, what you want to do is stand where the boy is right now. And then you face up, and then you start running. And I and open the menu at the end of my run. Exactly, as soon as you had approximated the ramp. All right. Very good. OK, <laughs> now the boy and the sprite are currently walking up towards the lady. And this is kind of what we need for them to be doing while they get healed. Because it's going to be uh, the equivalent of me holding up. I need to be holding up and being healed while in a barrel state. And right now they are holding up. Indeed. All right. Okay. So what you can do now is kind of simple. Start um, with the spell that the lady has to heal everybody. All right. And then as soon as you can, switch over to the sprite or the boy and just open up the menu again so we have a bit of buffer time. You don't technically need to open up the menu with the boy, but it's just so we have a bit more time to talk. Okay. All right. So like this and like that. Excellent. All right. So now the boy is currently controlled by him, which means he can actually use the menu in order to give the lady a barrel. The way the lady needs to receive a barrel is by using her menu exactly. with the X button and then give her a barrel. That way she will also be barreled while she also gets healed at the same time. That's kind of the trick to get everybody healed at the same time, but also have a barrel at the same time. Exactly, but she, because she couldn't open her menu while she's casting, you have to wait, but you can open someone else's menu if you switch characters. They can't use items because they're in a barrel, but it gives you the opportunity to switch back to the girl. To yes, go into her menu, yeah. Alrighty, so, and as soon as I give the barrel, Basically, the spell will eventually go off. You wait until the spell basically goes off and then switch back to the lady and hold up. All right, let's do this. There we go. And just hold up and everybody is up there. <laughs> just that is slide, so cool. <laughs> just slide up the ramp. So the quick way how you do this is naturally uh, you just enter. If you'd like to, you can kind of try this the quick way if you'd like while sure, I explain sure. it. Um, you just enter the palace here You with the lady. You run up and just um, immediately barrel the sprite when the boy, well, they stand there and they'll heal everybody, then do this entire sequence in one go. Okay. So uh, maybe as a... Okay, no, sorry, go, go on. <laughs> maybe as a little explanation as to why is that even useful for anyone who knows the game. What you skip inside the fire palace is literally going to the left, 
then down the stairs where you activate an orb with salamander magic, which is the fire magic. And right there, you... You end up just activating a switch, and then you're pretty much there already where you end up at the top of the ramp. So you might think this is not all that useful or worthwhile at all. Like, why would you even bother doing this? It doesn't even save much time. The trick is that in Seeker of Mana, the entire area is nice. Thank you, thank you. I'm so proud. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. The entire uh, fire palace here is yep. essentially just kind of like a sequence of events. First, you are expected to activate the switch in the basement, then the next switch, then the next switch, etc. And right now, in the speedrun, we do not go and grab the seed of the fire palace, where, which you need to retrieve in the ice country. And the reason why we can just straight up go and seal the mana seed of fire anyways is because the game doesn't realize that it should actually set up the flag that where it tells the game that, oh, the mana seed of fire has not been retrieved yet. We need to go and retrieve it. Because we skipped that switch in the basement, essentially it just does not realize that there's something missing. The entire sequence of events is just slightly offset, and we can skip an entire dungeon thanks to it. And that's that. Exactly, and it links back to what you said earlier, which is, uh, in that scenario, you don't recover the seed at all. And Indeed. later on, you need to have all the seeds in the Grand Palace, but you also skip the part where it's quick, it's required, so it all ends up working because you would be soft luck later on, or you would have to go back and could you go back and do the fire palace fire seed sequence? Um, not the fire palace seed sequence, but yeah, no. you could go back into the ice palace and finish that boss. But there's little point to doing that. For the grand palace, you actually only need the magic. You don't need the mana seeds themselves. You just need the magic of the corresponding elements oh, in order true. to progress through. Although we do also skip those with by going <laughs> back through the grand palace. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, you, you screen wrap. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. That's true. Indeed. All right. Uh, I think that'll wrap this part up. This is perfect. Thank you, Yagamot. A super good teacher. I've uh, Yeah, it's the second time I'm doing this, so uh, it may seem as if I practice a lot, but I didn't. I haven't tried it uh, since last time. And um, it was pretty much the same last week where... Uh, you explained so well. You explained so well, Yagamot, that I've I've been able to do it third try. So that's pretty much the same as I was doing um, last week, which was awesome. So thank you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we should wrap this episode up. But uh, I think I want to leave on a, um, a good note. I think I want you to, if there's something you would like to tell new player, new runners, or maybe not new runners, but people who don't are on the edge of becoming a speedrunner, but don't do it. Uh, do you have something to say to them just to make them make the jump? Uh, or if they do start and they think it's really hard and they can't do it, uh, some kind of words of encouragement? Because you were there at some point. We all were, right? <laughs> kind of. Um, yeah. What I would like to tell those people is quite simple. Just do it. <laughs> it's a bit of a meme, honestly, but it's true. So there's actually a event that happens every once in a while, organized by Golden or around the speedrunning community, where it's called the 12-hour challenge. The 12-hour challenge, you can just pick a game where you would, where you kind of meant to learn the speedrun or speedrun it for some time, and within a weekend, about 12 hours, take more, take less. It's not strict in any means just the idea is that at the end of those 12 hours that you invest you will have done your first speed run and that is kind of the exact concept that i suggest to do for people for seeker of mana the way i originally did it i just i didn't intend to finish the game in one sitting i just used save states all over the place i <laughs> uh, played this on emulator just because that's what i had access to at the time yeah. and just save stated and loaded and basically kind of quote-unquote cheating my way through it but surprisingly enough the second time through i pretty much did not have to resort to that at all and you would be surprised how quick you can pick up and also retain and learn those things by just doing it once and going all the way through so just do it yeah and 
that's actually a good way to put it because we most of the time see runners, especially in marathons or in special settings or even when they're finished routing and it's always so impressive and that's a really compelling reason to watch speedrunning in general, but nobody starts with a super optimized run even if they're following someone else's note. Uh, and some sometimes the runner doesn't the, don't uh, stream their first try, and that's quite all right. But you end up seeing a finished product, and you don't see how the run is made or the little mistakes we all make in the beginning, and that may make people think like, yeah, they're so good, they're god gamers. Your word, your words. Um, how can I do the same? But we've all mm -hmm. been there right <laughs> we all yes. been uh, at the beginning of a game like it's supposed to be a two hours run i'm six hours deep and i'm not finished and that's all right yes absolutely so yeah i think this guy kind of goes along the uh, let's say even more or less common misconception of people that just think oh speedruns they just run through the game they don't enjoy it they don't put time into it not realizing that speedrunners probably spend a lot more time with the game practicing and just learning the game really just kind of as a system itself just learning it literally putting time into it as if it was a school project yep. um until they are good enough to do that this is not something you can just naturally do and sit down absolutely just everybody will have those same starts yeah that is how it is there's um uh, a, a, not not necessarily a marathon but an event you can uh, see online which is called Cuso grande i don't know if you've been there <laughs> yes <laughs> i participated in that uh, oh yeah you've participated in it uh what, what game um quite a few at this point last <laughs> game actually was some weird japanese game Boy advance game that was just super strange <laughs> which is a common so, team with Kusa Grande in general yes Kusa Grande basically is kind of a blind race tournament so to speak of a game you have never seen or played before and the games are almost exclusively of questionable quality like yeah. I would even say bad at times but that's kind of the fun of it because you can see people that are well versed in other runs and other speed runs well, you're not going to be that good the first time through, I can tell you that much. And uh, they always seem to find the most craziest game that it's impossible you've played before. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you've never touched those games and, and it's super fun to watch because it breaks that perfect gamer or that god gamer uh, vision we have of speedrunners and and that's all right it's super fun to watch them struggle in such simple thing and it's even more fun because there's commentators and the commentators have dabbled in the game a little bit and they yes. sometimes know what to do and uh, the the runners don't and they will um, the commentators will give you what they're supposed to do next so you know and the commentators know and you see them search and find and try and try again uh, and you even <laughs> yes. have a little bit of a feel of, but I know what to do. Of course, it's because a commentator told you, but there that's a little bit of a, oh, I, I'm, I'm cool too. I know about the game now and they don't. <laughs> and it's super fun to watch them uh, die in, again and again. Yes, indeed. Um, maybe a quick shout to Brosentia, that is B-R-O-S-S-E-N-T-I-A on Twitch. Brosentia yep. on Twitch, who actually holds those tournaments. If you're interested, I highly recommend you check that out too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Bruce Inch's, uh stream is one I'm always, uh, which uh, one which is close to my heart. I really like him playing almost anything. But Cuso de Grande is a, uh, it's a thing. It, it is definitely a thing. Yes, I do. <laughs> By the way, and uh, this is just my theory, and it's only for fun. But I've watched the run you've told me. Uh, earlier the run you've made of um rockman x oh okay Rokeman i've watched that rockman x i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i've watched yeah. that and um the at the beginning of the run brosensha is on a couch or not on the couch but uh, just behind you mm -hmm. and the more and the more the run goes and the worse the games get um at some point there's some kind of a spark in his eyes and I think he starts <laughs> enjoying you suffering from that game. 
or everybody else suffer from what the game has to offer. And I think even then, he wanted to see speedrunners suffer, I think. It was yeah, <laughs> in the nicest way possible. Yeah, of course, I of course. <laughs> yeah, no, Bruce Sanchez is a really cool dude. That's 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 my point. But I think there is some kind, yeah. something really fun in watching his eyes go so wide and big, and he's like, "Oh, but that's awesome!" And I, I'm not sure at that point in his life he knew he was go gonna do something like Cuso Grande. But watching it back with this uh, new thing in mind. You can see the spark in his eyes like, oh, that's cool. There, There's somebody doing a really awful game. But awful block is already a thing at that point. But I think you all you already enjoyed that, right? Yes, that, <laughs> uh, that's a thing. And yep. there's definitely a weird kind of thing that is just fascinating about, well, how to put it, bad games, but being done by people that are either good at it or not at all. Yeah, exactly. The two extremes, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, I think that wraps things up. Thank you so very much, Yagamoth, for coming on the show. Uh, two weeks in a row, so that's a lot of time from you. That's really appreciated. Thank you for having me. Yes, and um, maybe we'll see each other again in the future. But for now, uh, everybody just go on Yagamoth's stream. Go and give him a big shout out, a big hi. He will be uh, really happy. I'm pretty sure to see you guys on his stream. Yes, thank you very much. And well, I wish you all the best with your podcast as well. And I hope it works out well. Thank you. Have a good evening, all.